ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. You just heard the end of a dance routine from some of Australia's best male netballers. The crowd, they're loving it. The broader reaction, it wasn't so positive. Why is that? There were levels of ray gun misinformation on this story. What's real, what's not? And why do some find a few blokes cutting shapes on a netball court so triggering? We're diving in. I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily. Brittany Carter is the best journalist in Australian netball. BC, welcome. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you. Let's start at the scene of the triggering, the Fast Five netball event. I think some context might be helpful. Can you just talk to us about what this event is and where does it sit in terms of the netball scene? Yeah, look, it's not taken too seriously in netball land. The rules are different. It's a condensed version of the game. Think, you know, T20 to cricket, rugby sevens to rugby union, Auckland nines, that kind of thing. It's shorter, it's sharper. It's supposed to be a fun environment and a lot of national setups will send development teams. So players that they want to maybe see represent the national senior side in years to come but certainly nothing too serious. It's, it's supposed to be a, a fun carnival environment. The crowd, they're here for everything, aren't they? I'm going to say those dance moves from Shane we just saw then, very similar to what I've got in my uh, toolbox here. Hopefully we don't get the camera on me because I will be doing some flossing. The crowd, on the other hand, they are warming up nicely, Miriam. They are warming up. And steering into that fun element is the dance component. And if you haven't watched it before, it's across the board. Can you break down to us what is the dance element of this event? So every team is asked to do a dance. I don't think it's compulsory. I just think everyone says, sure, because they're buying into that environment. People come as fans in groups. They make a weekend out of this. It's across two days. And they dress up as well. So I think it's trying to give the fans something to really make sure that they come back. Like it's something a little bit beyond a short game of netball. So, yeah, every team does one and it's something that's happened for years and years now. And what was it that the Australian lad served up that has been, you know, the centre of conversation for the last few days? So they were inspired by Ryan Reynolds' character in Deadpool and Wolverine, that new movie that's come out this year, um, taking on the Bye 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 song by NSYNC. The dance routine he did. So, yeah, that video has 3 million views on YouTube. It's reasonably well known. I don't see any kind of crazy reaction to that. That was actually celebrated as a pretty great pop culture moment so they were inspired by that and basically that's where they went with it and also something of a masculine borderline violent sort of film so what came next was a little bit surprising can you talk us through the reaction yeah so in the video clip that's gone viral you can hear the crowd absolutely loving it So it was well received on the day. I think where it took a dark turn was on social media in the days to come. So uh, unfortunately, the other side of the internet, the not so positive side picked it up and started to call it gay and, you know, be quite, quite homophobic about it and start slandering the players for basically taking the piss out of sport. I don't think many people realise that... Fast Five has this fun carnival vibe and so they just assumed it was a men's test match and that they just decided to do a dance before it. And so misinformation was rife. Some people also thought it was a response to New Zealand's Haka. Um, Some suggested that Ray Gunn may have been involved given that kind of scandal that, that was taken on during the Olympics. So, look, they were just having fun with it. As I said, they were just doing what every other team did. And it was really interesting to see that the reaction didn't take that turn for any other clip of the other men's teams or even the Australian women's team who also did a dance. Do the whole 
Yeah, it was really unfortunate to see it take a dark turn like that. And Britt, this is in that kind of ray gun space where the reaction has been way bigger than the players could have ever anticipated and would have ever been exposed to previously. Now, you've spoken to the captain, Liam Forcadilla. What did he have to say about the experience? Yeah, it was actually really cool to hear that the team are putting a positive spin on it. So their social media platforms have all grown from the incident. So there has been some positive to come out of it. Oh, yes, I've noticed a, a bit of a jump in my socials um, on both my TikTok and Instagram. Not that I'm very active on um, the TikTok, but I also have been getting a fair few messages of support and love from um, lots of netball fans. In terms of the reaction and the way that people were so offended by the men's dance, but, you know, fine with the women's, he thought it was actually sexist. It's our first time winning it, so maybe that also shone a bit of a spotlight on us as well. But it's a little bit sexist, I suppose, yeah. in the opposite um, sense of it, yeah. And he thought it was something to do with fragile masculinity. You know, people seeing that and thinking, hang on, that's not how we want men to behave when we when they play sport and represent our country. Yeah, I do think that it might be a little bit of an um, Aussie thing to kind of, um, I suppose, tear down um, a bit of that tall poppy syndrome. So, yeah, it's, it's quite disappointing and quite un-Australian, I think, to not be, like, boosting up our sports teams, especially our national teams. We want them to be tough. We want them to be hard. And seeing men in a fun environment like this, just really enjoying themselves, probably doesn't fit that mould. So I, I think what was wonderful was he said, you know, no matter our sexual orientation, whether we're straight or gay in this team, we accept each other and we're very comfortable in our masculinity and where we sit in the world. We've got a very great culture in Australian men's netball where we're very secure within ourselves, um, whether we are gay or straight, um, everyone is very supportive. I don't think this is going to stop them in the future. They're keen to embrace this fun side of the game. And the other interesting thing was that last year they had a little bit of backlash. They said nowhere near, near this level, but they experienced a little bit of backlash last year when they did the nut bush, which again is weird, right? Because most men would have performed the nutbush at a wedding or at school. So they got a little taste of this dark side of the internet and the trolling last year. Last year um, when we did the nutbush, mm. we it did go somewhat viral mm. um, and that was definitely a little bit of a, a learning curve for us and I'm glad that we did have that experience last year because there was a core group of us that were there last year and I think that when 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 I used to those sorts of um, negative comments, they're banding together. They're feeling quite positive about it all, and just trying to see the lighter side of things. Given that sport and entertainment are getting increasingly cosy, like we're seeing these two things bleed into each other, and this is another instance of this. Do we kind of just need to chill a little bit? I mean, why do you think some of the Australian sports public found this absolutely triggering, Brit? I think it speaks to what we've mentioned earlier about the masculinity part of sport and how we expect our male athletes to act in the sporting arena. But I also don't think the reporting or the captions that were paired with this video on social media has helped things because the context really shows you how unserious this is. Like, I think, unfortunately, the mainstream media really tried to lean into the virality of the video and as such didn't report the facts that Fast Five is a carnival environment, it's not taken too seriously, it's not the traditional format, it's a condensed version, and everyone does a dance. And I think because that was lacking from the reporting, when it reached people on the internet who aren't familiar with Netball or Fast Five, they just took it and ran with it. So I think, unfortunately, it's a combination of things, but we definitely need to chill out a bit. A bit of a question without notice about the way it was taken in netball circles, because I think what we've established here is it's sort of what you might call broader, traditional Australian sports fans taking issue with it. But were there elements at all within netball from a female perspective who reacted to it in a way that might be considered sexist? I don't think so, because I think a lot of women play the sport and so they understand what Fast Five is. I mean, I'm generalising here, but 
I didn't see anyone reacting negatively to that video on the platforms that I looked at that were female. It was mostly men. I think it's triggered a certain part of our demographic here in Australia. And and look, when you think about netball more broadly, in our country, it is played by more than a million people. And the majority of those people are women currently. So I think women saw this and thought, oh, it's fast five. Like they were familiar with the sport. But the other thing that Liam said that I found interesting was that when the clip had been shared on a social media platform or a media platform targeting women, it was re- received positively. It's very interesting. It's it's the social media pages that or, or media outlets that are obviously targeting um, women that have been really um, uplifting and um, supportive of us. Right. It's, um, yeah, those other sort of mainstream older demographic um Uh, media outlets that have been (laughs) very happy to tear us down. So I think that also speaks to the demographics and how they reacted to this video in particular. As you sort of touched on, maybe the lads, we just need to chill a little bit. Brittany Carter, thanks so much for pulling it all apart for us um, and adding you know a few facts to what has been uh, a rolling conversation, shall we say. No worries at all, anytime. Just before headlines, in case you were wondering who actually won the title, Australia did. Jordan Webb sunk a four-pointer to snatch victory from New Zealand, 32 to 30. Headlines. Brisbane Broncos star Ezra Mam has been charged by police after a head-on collision last month. Police allege Mam failed a roadside drug test and then a further test in hospital. He was charged with drug driving and driving without a licence and is set to appear in the Brisbane Magistrates Court on December 16. The full AFL fixture has been released. Well, kind of. We have times and dates for all matches up to round 15 and beyond that, it is a rolling fixture. Hawthorne and Essendon appear to be some of the big winners from a primetime POV with a total of seven Thursday and Friday night fixtures across each of the first 16 rounds. Carlton also have seven games Thursday and Friday over the first 10 rounds. Not bad. GWS and Port Adelaide, they won't be as happy. The Giants have no games in those primo slots. The Power have one Thursday night game. For a full breakdown, head to abc.net.au slash sport. And the Socceroos are preparing to take on Saudi Arabia in their World Cup qualifier in Melbourne Thursday night. Both sides currently level on five points in their group and Socceroos coach Tony Popovich is confident his team can break through. We know what's coming and we have to uh, match that enthusiasm, that energy, uh, but have the patience and calmness to, um, to, to play our football at the right moments and identify what the game is presenting. Japan is the outright leader in Group C, leaving Australia, Saudi Arabia and Bahrain battling it out for the second automatic qualifying spot for the 2026 World Cup. I'm Patrick Stack. This is ABC Sport Daily, produced by Poppy Penny. Thanks to Channel 7 for the extra audio used in this episode. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.